First, I want to say congratulations on this movie. Thank you. And I sincerely cannot wait to see it again next time in IMAX. I cannot wait. Um, but I want to go backwards, actually, if you don't mind. When when you guys were making Get Out, you the movie is made for like four something million dollars. It was like not expected to do what it did. I don't think. When did you realize? Oh wait, this is like people love this, and this is going to be pretty big. I, I think I was because I was in it. I couldn't have that realization when everyone else had that realization. So I remember I had that realization when we did a Q and A in. January, the year after it came out, and it was packed. And I was like, this has been out for this has been out for nearly a year. Why is this room packed? And I was like, oh, it's a banger. Okay, cool. All right, cool. And then I understood that it was it had a life way beyond a normal film life, you know? So which is like you go over and then you watch it and it's on TV and then you go, oh, I'll watch it. It, it would get out as a completely different, it's an anomaly in that sense. Jumping into Nope, um, when Jordan told you about it, did he, is it like a text message? Do you want to do another movie with me? How exactly does that work? No, he just goes, yo, I want to talk to you. I was like, yeah, what do you want? And then, um, then uh, we sat down, he called, no, we sat down about something else, and then he called me about it. Uh, and then uh, we had a two hour conversation, he spoke the whole film. He like, just said the whole film to me over the phone in the pandemic. And then uh, I was like, well, that's a lot to take in. That's a lot to take in. I was like, you, have you written that down? <laughs> just writing the script. And then, um, and yeah, he wrote it down and then we read it and then we just kept building and conversating like that. So that's how I came to it. I'm just so curious about how he's changed as a filmmaker, because he's three for three. He's he's a very gifted artist. Um, I'm just curious what it's like. What Did he change at all when he was making this film in terms of is he exactly the same on set with the way he directs you? I mean, like, has anything changed uh, through his experience? Yeah, I think he's he's, he's way more assured, um, way, um, and he just believes in his instinct more. And he always has believed in it, which is, I think, why Get Out popped and why Us is is still in a conversation. So it's like, um, but with, with um, Nope, he just believed, and then so everyone then believed more with him, you know, and I can see, and he's just, you know, he's on it. He's on it, but it's a completely different experience because it was like, Get Out was so contained about, it's, this is contained, but contained in an open, expansive way as opposed to contained in a closed way. And um, so he, uh, yeah, he, but a lot stayed the same in Jordan. He's a lot of that's what makes him a great filmmaker. He always had. Uh, I'm a big fan of Hoyt and he was your cinematographer um, and you guys got to film with IMAX cameras. I'm just curious if you could, was, it, was this your first time working with like the real IMAX cameras and and what was that experience like for you? It was quite tough, like, because you couldn't hear, it was so loud. You couldn't really hear what the note or like sometimes Jordan would talk to you through the scene because a lot was happening CGI wise. And then like, you couldn't hear it or you couldn't hear the other person in it. And then, um, but it does feel like, wow, like we're doing this big. I still haven't really processed the IMAX of it all. I, I really want to see it on IMAX. Yeah, the thing about it that people don't realize is IMAX cameras are uh, loud. <laughs> you know, like they're, they're not silent. It's really not like you're, you're filming with, with digital. Did you feel any extra pressure as an actor? Because when you're shooting with IMAX film, you know the film's going, you know it's expensive. Did you feel any additional pressure when you're using cameras like that or did it not affect you? Nah, because it's just like cinema's forever. So you, you can't really stay in the moment. You just got to give all that you can. And then I just, I don't, I'm, I, I, in my head, if I'm in character, I'm not making a film. I understand I'm making a film, but if I'm in the mind frame of the person, I'm, I'm not making a film, I'm living a life. So then I'm like, well, that's what he would do in his life, so I'm, I'm, there's an IMAX there. You're capturing it, but I'm living a life. It's like there's a line right there. How have you actually been describing the film to friends and family? I haven't been. <laughs> it's hard to describe, <laughs> I had the same thing with Get Out. I, couldn't, I didn't describe it, so no one really knew what it was about when it came out, like, Daniel, what you done? And so I think the same thing with this. I told him like the region and the area, but it's hard to describe. It's hard to, it's to be experienced. A hundred percent. I'm a big fan of your work. Thank you. And I'm very curious. I love talking to actors about like how they prepare for a big scene. So hypothetically speaking, you have a huge scene on a Monday. You know it's emotional or it's gonna take something out of you. How early on are you getting ready for that scene? Can you take me through your process a little bit? Is there a lot of, are there a lot of lines in the scene? Well, we could play it two different ways. One, there's a lot of lines, or two, it's really emotional. Uh, I'll give you both. Uh, a lot of lines, I would learn it a week before. 
like the Black Mirror thing, I did this whole speech and it was like six pages of dialogue or whatever. I had to, I, a week before I would just chip away at it, chip away at it, because it'd just be on my mind because it's on the schedule. I'm like, that's, hap that's gonna happen. And then if it's really emotional, I don't really do preparing beforehand. I would prepare, like read the script and go, oh, okay, cool, and make certain decisions and make realizations, but I like, the immediacy of a moment. I like doing things that feel like the last edition, you know, like like a newspaper. Like this is the last thought I had in this time before I went to the edit. So yeah, I would l let it be spontaneous. You've done a number of different projects. Which do you think? What was the one that really stressed you out or made you really think, how am I going to do this scene? Was there one in particular that you still remember as like a real challenge? How, like how am I going to do it? Or just, you know, like one that really got in your brain in terms of, I don't know, being nervous about it, maybe. I Am Revolutionary scene was a, was a very uh, in Judas and Black Messiah. That was a very, um, man, what is going to happen? <laughs> and I think I did the Queen and Stim press tour just before that day. So I had a week of being off and I was in press mode. So I wasn't even in it. And I was like, ah, there's something happening there that I'm about to do. So that was a really thing. And also the fact that his son was on set. Um, was a big emotional one. So that was the one I was like, that's going to be an, uh, an intense day, yeah. I love talking about deleted scenes. Do you remember any for this film? Yeah, there was a couple. There was a beautiful, I mean, I love like beautiful, like like shots of like amazing location. This location, you shoot it, I mean, it's like cinema, yeah? And there was an amazing, where I was just riding by myself in a, it's an ATV, right? You call it? Sure. Like ATV riding. And there was a super wide shot, like of just seeing the whole ranch and the scale of it. I thought that scene, that shot was so amazing. I, 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 and I'm, it's, I don't think it's there anymore. Well, last time I saw it, I don't think it was there, but yeah, that, that was an amazing shot that I, I miss. I love learning about the behind the scenes of the making of movies and shows. For soon to be fans of Nope, is there anything you think might surprise them to learn about like the actual making of the movie? You could see Jupiter's claim from Haywood Ranch. Like you could, like, that's what like, it was like, you could see the set from in the distance. It was that like, we just took over this whole area, essentially. And it was like, but it was like five miles away or six miles away. You can see the other set and then you can see Haywood Ranch from Jupiter's Claim. So that's pretty cool. Um, what else is there? I mean, there's so much that happened, man. So much. What other things, what other behind the scenes? What areas are you thinking? Well, I don't know. It's like sometimes, um, I mean, the, it opens the door to so many different conversations in terms of like, there was a day on set where everything completely changed and Jordan did this or... Oh, there was a day that me and Jordan had a heat stroke. Oh, for real? Yeah, <laughs> I was talking that day. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, uh, and then I was like, I was sitting there, I had that orange hoodie in the middle of the summer in the desert and I was sitting there and I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, the doctor came and he's like, you all right? And I was like, I don't know, I feel a bit like, I can't, I want to move, but my body's saying no. He said, Nick, you're going for a heat stroke. And then Jordan was going for that exactly the same time in another vehicle. So I was like, and then we had to like stop the shoot in order for us to like get our strengths back to go back to the set. See, that, that fills in with a good, that, that's a nice story. Listen, I already got a wrap. I'm just gonna say sincerely, man, uh, thank you so much for your work and for giving me your time. Thank you, man, I appreciate that, man. Feelings mutual.